I think once people realize the gravity of our situation in terms of climate change and environmental change, they might feel like we're doomed, like this is, uh, it's very stressful and, and they can feel a sense of despair. And this is not what we are teaching our students here. We're teaching that there's a way out of this. It requires a massive investment from our society. It requires everyone to participate, but there's a way out. One of the things that makes this department so unique and a leader is that we bring together people who have different areas of expertise. It's very, very interdisciplinary. I think we have outstanding scholars in our department. That goes back to the time when Ralph Cicerone formed this department and really picked the top experts in the, in the country in these kind of topics. And I think we kept that legacy to work closely together with a, with a common goal uh, for, for our students and for our research. So I'm an oceanographer. I study photosynthesis in the ocean and biogeochemical cycles, which is basically looking at how climatological changes to the Earth system affect phytoplankton populations. And those are basically the, the tiny microscopic plants that live in the ocean and form the base of the marine food web. My group is one of the most diverse, and it's something that I'm really proud of. The fact that everybody's bringing a different set of tools to the table really brightens up the research and, and explores new avenues that I wouldn't be able to come up with on my own. So I work a lot on the risks and vulnerabilities of human systems to global environmental changes and trying to find scalable solutions to mitigate those risks. Wildfires are really interdisciplinary. Um, this department has a really long history of studying fires and in our laboratory we're studying global fires across the whole Earth system uh, using satellite data. In September we published a paper looking, uh, trying to predict the final size of a fire from the time that it ignites. This type of prediction is really important, especially in areas that are responding to strong trends in, in climate. So Shane was able to predict which fires grow really large and that's important because then in a situation where there are a lot of fires on the landscape, the fire managers can triage the problem and select certain fires to limit their damages to ecosystems and keep carbon inside ecosystems. 2019 was a very special year. The Amazon was in the news. Our research group gave almost 200 interviews about what was happening in the Amazon in 2019. And the main problem was that there's an increase in deforestation in the region. And so Brazil pretty much created the biggest bonfire for the past 10 years in the region by burning all these uh, forests that are clear cut. One place where I've realized turbulence really matters is over the Amazon rainforests. Working with ecophysiologists in the department here, I've come to appreciate that the way the physiology of the forest adapts to high CO2 actually changes the energy balance of the surface in ways that spark turbulence feedbacks. So that's opening up new frontier questions at, at the interface of our disciplines that I, I didn't imagine would happen, but I really like that about, about ESS. My name is Murat Aydin. I work with ice cores from Polar Ice Sheets. And we talk about atmospheric CO2 changes, right? We know the last 100 years have been highly unusual. And the reason why we know that is directly linked to the ice core trace gas research that has been done. I study water resources on land and look at how the water storage on land is changed. And that's important because both the ice sheet you know, has impact because it's going to raise sea level and it's going to impact on the population that live in the coastal area and water storage availability is a big deal, it's very important, it's a big impact. We've seen over the past decades that many glaciers around the coast of Greenland and Antarctica have been thinning, retreating and their flow have been accelerating, discharging more icebergs into the ocean than before and we first need to identify what the driver of change is and what uh, we can use numerical models to determine whether it's the ocean, whether it's changes in the atmosphere circul circulation, whether you know it's the, the topography underneath the ice that's making the ice less or more stable depending on where we are. One of the main data sets that I use is the one from the GRACE mission, is a satellite mission. It measures the gravity fields of the Earth. It means that it weighs the hairs every 30 days and we see what changes from one month to the other. And I think it provides a unique information about the ice sheet. And it's the first time that we are able to measure the total water store, also including groundwater in remote region as well. Well, part of what we do is educate um, uh, this next generation of, of students and they're supposed to spread the word. They're supposed to spread the knowledge 
uh, we're very proactive also in outreach and, and social media. I sort of started climate communications through social media and I specialize in sort of visualizing climate data through easier to understand graphics. It's not just the advantage of communicating the work, but it's also that you're learning about your own science and how people interpret your work. And I think it's extremely valuable and been very beneficial for my graduate studies. I've worked at a number of institutions and I can honestly say that UCI is the most friendly, receptive, inclusive environment I've ever been in, both in terms of the faculty and the students. We really try to create a community and then provide everybody with what they need to succeed. And having a diverse place, it really helps to have different ideas. We really believe in that. I really feel like our entire discipline is moving in the direction of merging what we know about the physical sciences with the solutions. Engineers have been doing this for a long time, but engineers tend to focus on pretty small scales, whereas we're thinking about it globally. Humans are by now an undeniable part of the Earth system, and uh, that's where we fit.